Hey there everyone, it's me Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting. I wanted to do some of these videos live, but my phone is what I use for live videos and it is just too big and in the way for me to get any actual um, good quilting done without it being in my way. So I'm going to show you kind of what I am going to do for some memory quilt blocks on a memory quilt so that you can then practice doing some different things on yours as well. So the biggest concern uh, for some people was that they just weren't sure what to quilt on their quilt block. Sorry for getting a little dizzy here. Just want to make sure that my quilt was tight and pulled up. Um, and so, you know, or how even just how to avoid some of the hazards. So a lot of these screen prints um, are very different. Some of them are very thick like this one and, and you don't want to stitch over it because that'll continue to make the screen printing continue to crack and peel. So you wanna avoid it. I call it avoiding a hazard. So what I try to do is just kind of quilt within like a six inch radius um, and make sure that I don't have anything like touching if I can help it. So I try to just avoid those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have, right now I have no idea what I'm gonna quilt in this and you're just gonna kind of watch it happen. That's kind of what I do with my memory quilts. Um, I just kind of make it up as I go and see what happens. So for this one, we got a bear in the middle. And because I want the middle to be uh, stabilized, I want to definitely quilt in this area. So I started somewhere where I would be inside my triangle. Okay, and now this is one of those areas where you're going to stitch on um, the actual screen printing. So what I did was I stopped my stitch. I'm going to stitch a long stitch. And I'm going to stitch a few regular ones in this black area just to lock it down. Stitch another long one. So I, I'm not actually stitching over the top. Okay, so right here, it's hard for y'all to see, but I have a long stitch. My scissors are underneath it right now. Long stitch, long stitch. And it's maybe a stitch and a half length, so it's not something that I have to worry about it getting caught on anything. But this way I'm not actually stitching on the screen printing if I can help it. And I'm doing a couple stitches outside of the long stitch just to keep everything kind of secured and tucked down. Okay, so now I've successfully stitched down my bear's face, which you can't really tell, and if I'm doing my job, you shouldn't be able to. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is just find my way down to the triangle. I'm gonna get out my ruler. I'm gonna stitch on either side of it. Long stitch again. And you'll notice that with screen prints, almost nothing's straight. So you kind of just, just have to go with the flow or not worry about if it doesn't line up. Sometimes, depending on the kind of screen printing, I will stitch over it, but this is the kind that's very hard and is going to crack. Okay. So now I'm outside of the triangle. I error on the side of black, so if for some reason I'm not following a perfectly straight line, I'm going to err on the side of black. And go all the way around. So I'm just using this block as a means to kind of give myself some inspiration. When it comes to the words, it's easy enough to just kind of like almost ditch around them, get close, as close to them as you can without stitching on the letters. If your thread matches and it's a dark shirt, a 
lot of those lines are just going to blend in. And see, now I have to go up because it's not straight. And now I'm going to stitch on the outside of this V because you don't have to stitch, you know, a quarter inch away from everything. Not to mention, this shirt was extra puffy when we got to it. You could see how high it was. So doing this will kind of keep some of that puff in the triangle and distribute it so that it's not over puffy or puckering or in the way. If we really need to, we can go in there and stitch something. One more time. Okay. So now I've stitched the whole thing, and it's hard for you to tell, but this is like super puffy. It's not puffy enough that it's gonna worry me, um, but if I wanted to, I could go in and just kind of, you know, stitch on either side of that line, which we could do now, and see if that helps a little bit with the puffiness and the distribution. If you want to take this a step further, you could really go in the, I sometimes don't go like in the letters, but I try to just kind of get along one side of them. Just to help keep it from being one big puppy section. I'm using an 80, um, and not an 80 20. I'm using a poly puff quilting string batting because that'll help suck up any excess that I might have in my quilt. Piecers would call it fullness, other quilters would call it fullness. And that can be a pretty common thing for memory quilts. Alrighty, so we just did our entire V. So now, and you can, it's funny, you can see it way better in the video. So you can see that this is a little bit puffier than everything else. So I'm gonna address that while I'm right here. And I'm just gonna do a, a line in there to really address how big that is. And now it blends a little bit better. So there are a couple of things that you can do. I like to do some straight line designs. I think that some straight lines to offset this V would actually look really nice. So I like to go from the bottom and work my way up if I can. The other thing that actually is really easy and you don't have to like tack off your threads a hundred times um, would be just doing an echo of it with straight lines that go all the way around. So I'm just gonna tack off my threads because I don't wanna to have to travel or get somewhere. Right now, we are floating in the middle of this quilt block. And right now, this is enough quilting to call it done if you really wanted to, but I know that the more people wash and wear, the more that this is going to move and shift, and I don't want this to look any different than the day that it comes off of my machine. So let's just do three quarter inch lines, or maybe even to keep it interesting, we can alternate three quarter inch and half of an inch. I'm gonna line up my ruler. Three quarter inch. This is gonna show how straight my shirt is right under this writing. And then you just use this space to travel if you can. As I'm going, I'm just telling myself, three quarter, one half, three quarter, one half.
So you can start to see a pattern emerging. And doing something like that takes something like simple straight lines and makes it just a little bit more interesting. Okay, so now we need to line this one up and try to keep it straight. So what I'll do, because we're going all the way across and it doesn't really matter if these ones match up exactly perfectly with the ones on the other side, the ones on cr up top are going to matter. So we're just going to line up the ruler from the top. nice and straight. Then I'll have a one half. And it's up to you how much you want to travel around to get to your quilt block or if you just want to cut and tie your threads. I'm just going to cut and tie my threads right here. We're just gonna go up this side. And you can see that all of this poof gets really well distributed in the straight line design, or any design for that matter that's gonna go back and forth and back and forth that's really gonna move um, all of the fullness around. ended up pretty good. So then if we take a step back and just kind of look at our block. You can see it all turned out with pretty even spacing. And it has a little more interest because you have the varying lines in there. So I hope this is helpful in you deciding what to quilt on your memory quilts. Um, and that it helps you, you know, get some good ideas going for how to make some memory quilts your own and add a little bit of interest. I like straight line designs especially because um, they're a little bit more neutral, they're not masculine, they're not feminine, they're just something that can easily frame your t-shirt design and really have that pop up off the quilt top. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this is helpful. Uh, please give the video a like and a share and I'll see y'all later. Happy quilting!